How you doing, YouTube? Mountain Massive Beer Reviews. Back to another review. India Pale Ale time, but difference here. Oak aged India Pale Ale time in the form of Forbidden Root Brewings. Night Moth. Oak aged India Pale Ale. Um, oak aged India Pale Ale. It's not a lot of people freak out over because uh, you don't see them all that often. There's only a select few breweries that do them. A uh, local brewery to me had done them. Um, you know, Cigar City, High Lie, OK High Lie, um, a brewery from Florida, Swamp Head Brewing, actually their 10 10 10 type of thing. That might have been a triple IPA though. They sent me one. Um, but it's a cool um, balance of flavor if you do it right. So anytime you can get one of these, it's kind of. Gets me all hot and bothered and tickled pink and all that kind of fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, Chi-Town area product. I don't know exactly where these guys are from. I will find out when I read the can. But um, this actually comes courtesy of Jordan. Thank you very much, Jordan, uh, from out that way. He ended up sending me a big box of IPA-ness. I know how you guys like it when I say that word. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to dive in. Let's see what she's got as far as what it says on this can. It says, Night Moth. Uh, they dance... On the powder of each other's wings, a crazy dervish around the streetlights, uh, each flickering apparition, a kind of pantomime. A, a feverish dance against the seasons until autumn when a Chicago chill finds each set of silky wings on the windowsills, a still mirror of another. It's a little too kind of trying to be kind of sad, emo, prosy kind of poem but whatever um okay Ginny Palo, 7.2 percent alcohol by volume uh forbidden root brewing chicago proper so there you go um 2017 it says on here so it's this year's version there's no date in the can it's you know it's an okay Ginny Palo, so i'm not too concerned about it it's cool it's kind of got that little bit of silence of the lambs kind of vibe going to it with the moth on there and stuff like that so i dig it so let's see what she's got My stomach's a grumbling. <clears throat> it says it wants beer, so we're gonna appease it by giving it beer. Look at that. Beautiful new glass. My beautiful future wife got me for her anniversary. She got me a little set of glasses, and that poured pretty good, so I'm kind of excited. Um, yeah. I mean, look at that. That is quintessential creaminess. I mean, that thing is gravity defying. Uh, I want to take a nap on it. Super tight compact bubbles. And what you're left with beer-wise is a really soft kind of semi kind of milky cataracty thing going on there. It's like kind of honey with a bit of like dollop of like lactose vibes to it. Not saying it has lactose in it, but it has like that milky cataract thing going on. But she's soft, man. I mean, you do expect that from wood. To be resting on wood, you expect roundness, you expect softness. But it actually visually represents that. It just has this kind of very soft vibe to it. She looks really pretty, to be perfectly honest with you. So yeah. Let's see what the nose has to offer. It's pretty much what it looks like to a T. Um, you're getting soft melon vibes. You're getting soft kind of stone fruity vibes from it. Non-bittering citrus vibes from it. But it has this kind of gentleness, this rounded edge thing. Um, like I said, the, the looks of it kind of gives you that kind of, okay, this thing is, is soft and rounded and all that stuff. The smell is much the same. It's definitely fruit forward. Uh, you know, what comes to mind is definitely kind of like a non too kind of exotic tropical fruit combined with a stone fruit with a little bit of citrus on the back end. So nice sweetness to it, nothing too crazy. It smells sweet, but I think the bittering's gonna win the day actually in the taste. But she smells nice. She smells gentle, but at the same time impactful. So yeah, does she smell like an oak age in your pan now? I don't know. I'm not getting much wood from it, but I'm getting that roundness from it, which is, you know, what you'd expect from that. So, we'll see what she has in the taste. Cheers. Yeah, she actually does taste like a Ogaijin and Palo. Now, why does it taste like that? What did I expect from it? And what did I get from it? You're getting, you're still getting that kind of fruit 
hoppiness from it. My guess is they did a bit of dry hopping. Not a ton, but a bit of dry hopping throughout the kind of oak process. So you're still getting those melon vibes I was talking about. A little bit of that kind of soft, non-exotic kind of tropical fruit vibes throughout it. But you get this inherent dryness throughout it. Um, that's your wood at play there. You're getting that kind of oak tannins in there that are working really nice because there's a nice sweetness to the beer. And you get that kind of dryness and kind of plays off each other. But the big portion of the show here is a vanilla. You're getting heaping helpings of vanilla here. Is it lactose? I don't think so. It could be. It could be a dollop of lactose combined with a soft vanilla from the wood. I'm leaning more wood, though. I mean, I could be totally wrong on it, but it just comes off as wood. Um, uh, you know, new oak, new clean oak can impart a lot of vanilla notes on beers. Um, even some aged beers, depending on what there are aged barrels, depending on what was aged in them, can impart a lot of vanilla. Um, you see that a lot with bigger imperial stout stuff like that. But this is kind of that fresh kind of oak vanilla. You get that dryness, you get that um, vanilla oakiness combined with that kind of hop roundness, but at the same time impact and a really nice mouthfeel. This is a fantastic fucking beer. I just want to figure out if that vanilla is coming straight up from the wood. I'm starting to lean a little bit. It might be a little bit of bits and pieces of other stuff floating around in there. From the look that tastes, probably a dollop of lactose in there. But I do believe you get a little bit from the wood, too. Really nice beer. Really one of, if not the best representation of an Oak Age Pale Ale I think I've had. Uh, some of the ones I've had uh, are actually almost every one I've had, come to think of it, has been pretty stellar. Because you don't see them that often. Oak Age Highlight is fantastic. Uh, a local guy made one that was really good. Um, the um, That uh, that Swamp Head one was very nice. It was almost like... Um, a weird kind of triple, slight American barley wine kind of barrel acing that worked really well for me. But as far as like your new school kind of New England style hazy IPAs and marrying that with oak, it just makes sense because the key word here is balance. The hops are represented well. Um, the wood is represented well. Um, that vanilla thing with I think it's a little bit both lactose and wood, but I could be wrong. Like I said, I have no idea about the beer other than the fact that I'm drinking it right now. Um, everything's really nice in tune. It's not too dense. It's not too thick. It's not too sharp. It's not too soft. Everything's kind of perfect down the middle. Yeah, absolutely banger of a beer. Um, one of the better pale ales in general I've had, let alone oak age. So let's cut to the chase. Let's get to that point. Is it one of the better uh, barrel, wood-touched, hop-forward beers that I've had as of late? Yes. Just does it for me. Absolutely delectable. Soft, creamy, and hits all the right notes for me. Uh, value and availability, I have no idea. Hopefully somebody out there can clue us into availability and whatnot. I assume this is brewery only sticker can stuff you see nowadays. Probably between 16 to 20 bucks a can, I'm assuming. And just say if you like what way you like this. If you like all the beers that I've mentioned, uh, whether it be, you know, Oak Highlight or, you know, your 10 10 10 from Swamp Witch or any of those kind of oak based uh, hop forward beers, um, this is definitely do you proper uh, because it's a nice beer, it's a delicious beer, it's a fantastic beer. It's all that stuff all in one. So it's made well, um, and it just seems like a, it seems like a complex beer. I think like these hop forward oaked beers are, are definitely not something you can just kind of throw a bunch of shit at and kind of come out, especially this well in the end. So yeah, definitely a good beer from a brewery that uh, I kind of really need more shit from. So we'll have to figure that out. But there you go, another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, didn't, anywhere in between. Down there, words and stuff and things. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Massive Beers, all four of those places if you want to check this dude or out anywhere else. And hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully enjoying a nice oak-aged top forward beer right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.